Your freezer door not fully closing, so the door stays just slightly open. So what I thought I'd do is create a quick my sensors device for monitoring. So you can see here that I have the temperatures uh, displayed so I can set alerts if it goes over a certain temperature. And I also have a sensor on the doors so if it's not closed um, it'll alert me as well. Um, so I have just some bare copper wire. I'll show you how I made all this in a second but it, basically it detects if the door is just even open by maybe a couple of millimeters. So I've set up my alert for five seconds on my fridge door. So I'll just give you a quick demo here of what that looks like. The refrigerator door has been open for longer than 45 seconds. Please close it. Hi, and uh, firstly, thanks uh, for taking the time to look at this instructable of a washing machine hack that I've done to add a delay timer. Um, so, uh, firstly, I'll switch the machine on. Takes just a few seconds for the Arduino to boot up, but when it does, um, we'll see, here we go, that we've got eight hours to run on the timer. The dot point is flickering quite quickly. Uh, indicating it's under 10 hours. If we want to increase that to more than 8 hours we just press the up button and now you'll notice the dot point is running quite slow indicating that's actually 12 hours not 2 hours. We can uh, take that down back down to any number also and we'll notice the dot point now is running uh, quickly again. So to start the machine uh, you can either normally just press the start button if you just want to start it now or if you want to rely on the delay timer that's it we just walk away now. If you want to zero out that delay timer, we can just press those two buttons at the same time. So for the purposes of demonstration, you see what happens when the timer finishes. The washing machine has now come on. Retrofab is a design tool that allows non-experts to customize the physical interface and behavior of legacy devices, such as this toaster. Retrofab intercepts and redirects all user input using integrated actuators and sensors. To retrofit this desk lamp, we first make a 3D scan. The user then annotates all the interface elements on the scan 3D model with the respective brushes available in toolbar on the left. The tool now responds by automatically generating a three-dimensional model that puts an actuator in place for controlling the legacy switch. The user can design new interface elements on top of the 3D print. In this case, a push button was added to make the lamp easier to operate by elderly people. Finally, the user specifies the preferred location of the mounting brackets. Once the generated 3D models are printed, Instructions for assembling the printed parts, as well as the wiring of electronic components, are provided. 